Hello, so this is going to be a video testing gas masks against beta radiation. So I'm going to go through a load of different masks in this video, both surplus ones and sort of more modern military examples. And the idea should be basically to see how good these are going to be at actually blocking beta radiation. So the Geiger counter I'm going to be using to do the test is the mini monitor. And this is really good for this sort of test because it just shows counts per second. So the lower the reading on there, the better the mask is blocking the beta radiation. Now, beta radiation, um, more penetrating than alpha, because a gas mask will block every single bit of alpha radiation coming through, because paper can block um, alpha radiation. However, um, a mask will do nothing against gamma radiation, because it's the most penetrating. Beta radiation can be stopped by, you know, a small bit of metal, or thick enough, you know, other materials, basically, if there's enough mass between it and the mask, and obviously the distance as well. So I'm going to be using the strontium-90 little coin type thing, you can see on the floor there the red one, which is the check source for the Polish DP66 and DP75 Geiger counters. And what we'll be doing here is putting the probe from the mini monitor inside the different masks, and then checking how much um, the mask is, you know, lowering the count. Again, I don't think any of these masks are going to completely stop the beta radiation getting through, but what they should do is hopefully cut it down a bit. So it'll give you an idea with some of these masks although they're not designed to stop beta radiation from penetrating them, which are actually better in that regard. Uh, there's not going to be filters on the masks for any of these tests, and I'm not going to be wearing them. The point is seeing how well can the radiation penetrate the material of the mask itself. So what I'll just do now is I will demonstrate to you what happens if you um, put the strontium-90 near the probe of the Geiger counter. So here's our Geiger counter. Let's just flick it on. And it will be reading some background radiation anyway which you can hear there, but background radiation is going to be pretty low. Now let's get the strontium-90. I'll put that just here. Uh, I'll try and get it in frame. Right, there's the strontium-90. Then what I'll do is I'll get the probe, lower it in. So there you can hear, it's very, very hot. Um, so, what we're going to do now is start testing it with the mask. So that gives you an idea if the probe's right next to it. Now, there's going to be a bit of distance. It's probably going to be this sort of distance. So let's just take a reading. I'll move the coin a second. So um, it's at the sort of distance I think we're going to be looking at. We're reaching the um, bit of 100 to 200 counts per second. So that will just give us some sort of idea of what the sort of ranges. It's almost actually in the K sort of test range bit for the um, Geiger, like the battery check. Because if I do the battery check, that will be about there. So, yep. Let's see if the gas masks at this sort of distance can keep it out of the green section, uh, as in below it. So that would be quite interesting to see. So, let's set up ready for the test. So, the first mask we're going to test is the Soviet GP5M, also known as the PMG2. I think its technical name is something like SHM66U or something like that. Um, but anyway, let's get on with the test. Let's, so, what we're going to do, the strontium-90 coin is in my hands, which isn't a great idea if you know anything about radiation, but what, who cares, I'm doing this for science, like many famous people did before, and paid the price horribly with radiation. So, the guy counter's picking up background there. And what we're going to do is slowly move the coin closer and closer to the mask. So that's it about this distance. Let's get it a bit closer. Oh, it's, this starts doing a very impressive job, actually. That's closer to the probe than before. So if I have it about this distance from the probe, yeah, it's cutting down the readings quite a bit. So rather than it being sort of 50 to 100 counts per second, it's about 10 to 20 counts per second. If we put it completely on the mask, it's still out of that green area. So that's quite impressive. Better than I expected. So yep, Soviet GP5s and GP5Ms, despite their primitive nature, and you know what most people would consider the cheapest, most mass-produced gas mask ever, it isn't actually all that bad at blocking beta radiation. It's certainly going to cut down your exposure to it. It's not going to completely protect you from it, but it will cut down your exposure. Now, for the Israeli civilian gas mask, the 4A1. 
At the moment, you can probably see the probe there, it's behind the eye. I'm going to test it near the eye and then I'm going to put it under the rubber. I don't think that this mask is actually going to do as well as the GP5 because I think it's slightly thinner rubber. Um, so even though this is a more modern and much better mask than the GP5, I think for beta radiation it's not going to be as good. So let's start moving that in there. Yeah, not quite as good, but this is through the lens. Although I should point out, for some reason, glass lenses, I imagine being slightly thicker, are better at stopping beta radiation than um, plastic is, if I put that right on there. It's not cutting it down all that much. Still by about a thousand counts per second, which I suppose is quite good in some sense, but um, not as good as the Soviet mask. So, what we're going to do now is just put that probe directly sort of in the nose section of the mask and see how it acts now. Ah, that's very good actually. Yeah, if I just sit the coin there, um, you can probably see that the Geiger counter isn't picking up all that much beta. Now I'm just going to move the probe slightly in there and I hope my knee isn't going to block your view, but yeah. Let's just do it on this bit of the rubber, and there we go. That's still surprising, actually this might be better than the GP5. I think what helps with this is the oral nasal cup is cutting down a bit of the thing. If I put it on the exact bit of the forehead, yeah, there we go. But it's still not bad. If you had a 4A1 on, you'd still be getting a lot less radiation going through you than if you um didn't have it on. So yeah, that's better than I thought it would be. So that's surprising, but there you go. Now let's jump forward in time to a much more modern mask. This is the Scott M98. And it's got the polycarbonate face visor there. So how well will this compare to cheaper plastics or glass? I don't know. But let's give it a try. Even when the strontium is directly on the plastic, it's not quite getting to 200 counts per second. So that's quite good. Right, better than I was expecting. Now let's just try the probe in a different section of the mask. Um, let's put it directly where your nose would be. So hopefully you can see that probe is there. Let me just adjust it up a bit, there we go. Now let's try this like that. Oh, that's very good. So yeah, the oral nasal cup combined with the rubber and plastic bits of the mask are keeping the counts very low. I guess that's because the space uh, keeps your face directly away from it. Remember, distance is important as well. But yeah. Right, so the Scott M98, as well as being a bloody good gas mask, is actually bloody good at blocking beta radiation. So that's another good, you know, point for the Scott M98. It does cut down on the radiation coming through quite a lot. Okay, now for the Finnish M61, a Cold War classic based on the American M9, but a bit better in quality. So, what we're going to do now is the probe is just about there in the mask. Let's try both the lens and the um, rubber. Oh, that's very impressive for the rubber, actually. Um, it's only just about reaching 10 counts per second, maybe going to get up to 20. Maybe just peaking over 20, but <clears throat> that's with the strontium directly on the rubber. Let's try the lenses. Right, the lenses are nowhere near as good on this as the rubber at blocking the beta radiation. This is probably the worst performing one so far, but otherwise, yeah, pretty impressive. So yeah, the lens is on an M61, um, but a big downside to it, it seems, with the beta radiation. But the rubber itself, if you look at that, that's actually very impressive. So even with the strontium directly against the mask itself, um, yeah, you're not getting loads of radiation get through there, so well done to the uh, M61, it's doing pretty well. Now for one of my favourite masks, the Avon S10. 
Now, what I'm going to do with this is show you the reading with both the outserts on and the outserts off. Obviously, the outserts on is going to cut down the reading a bit. But at the moment, I've got the um, probe just inside where the voice trumpet sort of cover is. So let's try this. Wow, that's very impressive. The plastic voice trumpet sort of cover is really cutting down the amount of radiation coming through. That's only a few counts per second getting through. That's very, very impressive. Um, right, now let's try it with the lenses. I'll, I'll just do this in one take, why not? Um, so, what we'll do is let's pull that lens off there. So if you had it in its default configuration, um, if we can get that lined up there, this is harder than it looks trying to keep a probe in place with um, the mask. Like that's just about there, right? Let's try that. So, just zoom out to make sure this is all in frame. Right, the stomping directly on the plastic lens is getting to about 500, 600, 700 counts per second. So, um, yeah, that's not ideal. Now let's put this cover back on. Check the probe still in place. Right, it is. And let's. Saying that, as soon as I said that, it wanted to move, didn't it? Right, there we go. Let's try it again. So now it's got the outsert on. Look at that. I know it's slightly further away because the outsert causes more space, but yeah. So what we've learnt from this is if you've got outserts on a mask, good to have them on because it's going to massively cut down the amount of beta radiation hitting your eyes in this sort of area. So yeah, there we go. With the outserts, the S10 has performed really, really well. Um, I imagine this will be similar for the CT12 and FM12, but they're not in a convenient place for me to grab for this video right now. But I'll probably do them at a later stage if this video becomes popular. But yeah, the S10 is performing really well against uh, the Strontium 90 with the outserts on. Without the outserts on, it's not great. Uh, I imagine the FM12 and CT12 would be better due to the stronger lenses in it. But yeah, with the outsert covers on, that's only just about getting to 10 counts per second. So yeah, there we go. The S10 performs really, really well. Now for the Avon M50, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It's the mask being used by the US military at the moment. So at the moment I've got the probe um, on the, this eye. Um, so it's obviously got the rubber sort of face piece of the mask and then the plastic, I think, which is, I think it's polycarbonate, sort of outer protective bit on. So let's try the strontium on this. Not as good as the S10, interestingly. Still not an awful reading when it's that close, but yeah, the M50 doesn't block it as well as the S10, with, even with the uh, outsert on. Right, what we'll do now is um, put the probe directly into the bit where the uh, sort of mouthpiece is and the voice diaphragm and the XL valve. There we go, and let's try this. Let's get a bit of dust off me there. That's very good though, actually. The plastic components in this, combined with the rubber valves, are really cutting it down. Again, not actually even getting to 10 counts per second. Ah, so there you go. That was surprisingly uh, good, actually. Yeah. Right. That's enough radiation for today. Let's put the strontium away. And we can do other masks if this video becomes popular in a later video. Because I'm sorry if I didn't cover your favourite masks, but... There's only so much I want to handle the strontium in one day. Right, so hopefully you found that video interesting. I certainly found it interesting, even if it is a bit dangerous to film something like that. But yes, what we have learnt from this is wearing a respirator on your face. Although obviously its job is to stop you inhaling, um, you know, harmful substances. And to protect obviously your eyes using the lenses. It does actually cut down on beta radiation, some more significantly than others. But yeah, what we can learn from this is it's far better having a respirator on than not having one on. And if you do have outserts on yours, it will cut more beta radiation getting through as well. So it's probably worth leaving them on, especially if you've got like, you know, just standard polycarbonate outsert type things, which just make the lenses a bit stronger. It also cuts the amount of radiation coming uh, down through the mask. So yeah, all in all, uh, respirators don't just protect you... Um, 
you know, physically from inhaling stuff, they do cut down the amount of radiation getting to your face, uh, which is quite an important job. Again, it's not a 100% thing, but it's better to have it on than not have it on.